Lawrence's work. Recently, she compiled a book called Margaret Lawrence Writes Canada and Africa. During her research, Davis came across letters between Lawrence and her publisher, Jack McClellan. Dr. Davis recently returned from an archival research trip to Toronto, and she is set to talk about her experience at the Red Deer Public Library. Whitney Fox has a chat with Dr. Davis about the personal insight she gleaned on Margaret Lawrence and the upcoming lecture. First off, what's drawn you to the work of Margaret Lawrence? Uh, I would say it actually goes back to 1987, which was the year of her death. And I remember sitting at the kitchen table that morning. I was in grade 10, and my mom, who's a big fan of Margaret Lawrence, sat at the table and announced that this great woman and author had just died. And that a moment has stuck in my mind, and I began to read Margaret Lawrence's novels. So it really goes back that far. So how did you get from there to writing a book that's going to be released soon? I mean, I have a love for English literature as well, and I decided that I wanted to be a professor. So I did my three degrees in English, and my most recent was my PhD in English from the University of Alberta. And I decided to do my PhD dissertation on Margaret Lawrence because I loved her work so much, and I thought she had so many interesting things to say, and I thought there was a lot to say about her that hadn't been said yet by critics. And I was lucky enough to work with uh, Dr. Nora Foster Stovall, who's one of the world's leading experts on Margaret Lawrence, and that ultimately led to the book that I wrote. And can you tell us about that book that's coming up? Sure. So the book is called Margaret Lawrence Writes Africa and Canada. It's a critical analysis of Margaret Lawrence's work. It's not a biography. But I do talk a lot about the books she wrote about Africa, which aren't as well known as the books she wrote about Canada, and her views on decolonization. I also talk about her work um, about Canada and her views on multiculturalism. And I kind of relate the two, which a lot of critics haven't sort of drawn those two sets of, of writings together. Okay, so what was it that caught your eye when you were researching that has taken you to where you're working now? Ah, uh, yes. That, um, that was a great moment. It's, it's so much fun doing work in archives. And uh, when I was working on the book on Margaret Lawrence, I had the opportunity to travel to McMaster University and York University, so Hamilton and Toronto. And Margaret Lawrence's original letters and her manuscript are housed, they're housed at those two places. And so I did some research there uh, for my book, and I came across some letters between Margaret Lawrence and her publisher, Jack McClelland, of the publishing company McClelland & Stewart. And the few letters I came across uh, were so dynamic, and their personalities came through so strongly. And Jack McClelland, I could just tell he was such a character from these letters uh, that I felt there was really something there. So you've just gotten back from a research trip in Toronto again. What were you looking for when you went? Uh, well, actually, it was my third trip there. And once I decided that I, I wanted to pursue this, um, I contacted Dr. Linda Mora, who is a professor at uh, Bishop's University in Quebec. And she specializes in archives and uh, letters, particularly written by women. And I thought it would be great if we could work together on the project. With my experience, um, having written about Margaret Lawrence and her experience on writing about archives and letters, I thought we'd be sort of the perfect fit. So she agreed to work with me on the project. So she's my co-author. So when I went um, to Toronto last week to do more research in the archives, she met me there and we worked together. There are, in fact, 400 letters, and they just tell such a fascinating story. So we're going to be publishing the letters themselves, and then we're writing a critical introduction. And we've also um, written many annotations and footnotes to give context to the letters themselves. 400? Yeah. That's Isn't that wild. amazing? Yeah. What what did they have to talk about for 400 letters? <laughs> well, it's quite amazing. I mean, the the letters span about 30 years from um, 1959 until the year of Margaret Lawrence's death. Over time, their relationship develops from a professional relationship to a deep friendship um, that has a lot of mutual respect for one another. They had the feistiest disagreements you can imagine. They were so blunt with each other. Um, they talked about things like, um, for example, McClellan continually wanted her to attend promotional events for her books. And she felt very anxious about going to any sort of public event. She was anxious about public speaking and so on. 
And so she would just get so angry at him, you know, for trying to get her to go to these things. And he would try and persuade her and so on, and there was this back and forth. Um, they had disagreements about the way the books were packaged. Jack McCollin at one point, uh, with regard to a book she wrote called Heart of the Stranger, said, well, it'll make a great gift item. And uh, a few other things like that. She wrote back, she was so angry, she said, well, isn't that nice? Maybe we can wrap it in pink ribbon, you know? And she was kind of insulted that he would, uh, he would consider it just a gift item and so, instead of something more serious and more intellectual. The other thing that comes out really strongly is a uh, history of kind of the development of Canadian literature. Um, multiculturalism was happening at the time in Canada, so there was kind of politics come into it sometimes. The notion of censorship in Canadian schools uh, comes into play through their letters. Um, so many issues that go beyond just um, their personal relationship and their personalities come through as well. It kind of sounds like you've stumbled across a treasure chest here. Nobody's looked into this before? It's not that people didn't know about the relationship between Lawrence and McClelland and how they did have a close friendship. Um, that has been talked about a little bit. Um, in James King's biography of Jack McClelland, he also wrote a biography of Margaret Lawrence, and there's some details that come out there. A critic named Sam Selecki has written, um, published a book that um, includes letters from Jack McClellan to various writers, and there are a few, just a handful of letters between um, Lawrence and McClellan, but nothing, um, there, there's no book like this that really shows in this kind of comprehensive way uh, how they work together and, and how much they did together for Canadian literature. Thank you for your time today. Thanks so much. Laura Davis is a professor at Red Deer College. As part of the Red Deer Public Library's public outreach, they are presenting Dr. Davis at the Snell Auditorium on Wednesday, March 3rd. Tied to the theme of books and stories, this is Paul Weller going back to his 2002 album, Illumination.